Hi, my name is Cédric Hauteville, and this is Scopes Under the Lens. Today we're going to talk about histograms. Well known by still photographers, histograms are the filmmaker's best friend, both on set and in post-production. But they are often overlooked by DSLR shooters. Histograms provide an alternative representation of the image, in a way that gets around a number of biases. They don't tell you whether the image is correctly exposed, but they help you come to that conclusion. A histogram is useless without this corresponding image. There is no single ideal histogram that you need to strive for for every single shot that you're setting up. You, you have to learn how to read them and make decisions accordingly. While they are usually displayed together, there are actually several histograms that we're interested in, and they tell us slightly different stories. The Luma histogram is arguably the most important. Its job is to tell you whether you're clipping the highlights or the shadows. In its most basic form, a histogram tells you how many pixels in the image share the same level of brightness, or luma value. On one axis you've got the luma values, from black to white, and on the other you've got the how much. Depending on what displays the histogram, it might be a pixel count or a percentage of the image. What really matters is the position of the spikes and their relative sizes. A histogram won't tell you which parts of the image contribute to a spike, so you have to make educated guesses. Only then will you be able to determine if your scene is under or overexposed. On that note, it's worth reminding that over and under exposure are relative concepts. Assuming you define proper exposure as neutral grey, you'll never be able to properly expose every single pixel of the image. You're always going to have shadows and highlights. And in the areas of the frames that matter to you, you don't want those highlights or those shadows to clip especially if you plan on recovering them in post. You're not really overexposing an area that you weren't trying to expose for in the first place. Overexposure is only really an issue when the roll-off to the highlights doesn't look natural. The other histogram is actually a set of histograms, the RGB histograms. They work in exactly the same way as Luma histogram, except that the information is broken down per color channel. It's important to know if a channel is clipping more than the others because when it happens, you will have color inaccuracies when you're trying to recover those highlights. An interesting side effect of histograms is that they give you a clue about the white balance. If the spikes in the RGB histograms look similar but aren't aligned, there's a chance that the white balance is off. Or maybe it's just that this picture contains a lot more blue than it contains red. Looking at the frame will tell you which is which. It's important to get the white balance right in camera, or at least in the right ballpark, because if it's too far off, then one of the channels might clip. On set, histogram is the main tool I use to assess the scene's exposure, along with the Luma waveform. I don't use the camera's built-in metering system for two main reasons. The camera tries to expose for the center of the image, and it's trying to expose for neutral grey when I might want a high-key or low-key image. So, when I set up an exposure, I look at the histograms to determine whether I'm clipping anything, and if I am clipping something, I look where I'm clipping, and if it's in an area where I don't want any clipping happening, then I dial down the exposure until it's satisfactory. In post, histograms serve the same purpose as on set. The only difference is how you're going to use the information. When color correcting, histograms help you determine how far you can pull or push the exposure, the contrast and the saturation before you start losing any detail. In some tools, histograms can display the mean and max value for each color channel. It's especially useful if you have to stay within certain boundaries, uh, such as the Ilbrex 709 limitations. As we said earlier, histograms can also give you a clue about your white balance, so you technically could use them to adjust the white balance, but they are actually much better tools suited to that task. Histograms have their problems too. Most histogram displays will be scaled to the biggest spike. So if a given level of brightness is dominating the image, it will literally dwarf all the other spikes, preventing you from seeing more subtle nuances. Now, the problem with histogram is actually very few stills cameras display them when you're shooting video. You could always take a still and take a look at the histogram in playback mode, but really, you want to monitor that in real time, especially if you've got changing light conditions. Canon DSLR users can use Magic Lantern in order to display histograms and other useful scopes. If your camera is enabled to display histograms in video mode, you'll have to use an external monitor that has that capability. I hope you find that video useful, and if so, please like, share and subscribe, and see you soon for the next episode.